Works 96.7 WORX. Good morning, and thank you for tuning back into Cop Talk, brought to you by Anderson Sales and Services. Typically, Cop Talk is the last Tuesday of each month, but special Wednesday edition. And in studio, as always, is Jefferson County Sheriff John Wallace. And once again, Sheriff, we always appreciate you coming on for the program. It's always my pleasure, AJ. And so um, we were just talking about this. Uh, obviously, we have a, a you know holiday weekend coming up, the Labor Day holiday, and we want everybody to have an enjoyable holiday, but a safe one. <laughs> Absolutely, and we bring it up each year, or each each holiday season, uh, to remind our uh, you know our travelers to, to please be safe. Uh, it is the uh, I guess the last week in the summer, so to speak, not technically, but uh, yeah. a lot of people view it as that. So uh, we know there'll be a lot of barbecues, a lot of uh, a lot of families getting together, uh, a lot of friends enjoying each other's company. But uh, the most important thing is to be safe. And if you do uh, choose to uh, uh, drink some uh, alcoholic beverages, uh, please don't drive. Make sure you designate that driver. Uh, law enforcement will be out in force uh, to make sure that the, that the roads are safe. So. Uh, like I said, have a good time, but we encourage everybody to uh, be smart and travel safe. Well, you know, like you said, designated driver, I know we have a taxi service in town, and uh, I've been hearing rumors all around that apparently um, Uber is active in Madison now. So, well, See, I haven't heard that yet. I'm yeah. surprised it took this long, right? But, uh, right. but yeah, there's always uh, there's always many ways of, uh, of getting home safe uh, rather than driving yourself. And, uh, you know, I know we really uh, preach that a lot, but, uh, you know, it only takes one one uh, misstep in judgment to uh, to go out and get yourself and you know or put somebody else in harm's way and, and we certainly don't want to no. end an enjoyable weekend with a with a tragedy so uh, you know please don't drink and drive yeah and um, as we yeah, as you said um labor day sort of the the ceremonial end to summer vacation we are back in school uh school's back in full swing so you know we want people being safe in that regard as well yeah absolutely it's uh well, it's hard to believe i'm not sure where summer went but, yeah uh, but <clears throat> it certainly went by fast um yeah but school is back in session and uh, you know use that uh, extra caution when driving uh, remember our, our school kids at the at the school bus stops and, and remember our school buses certainly <clears throat> i know that and we talk about um you know kind of changing gears and did, i know we do have a you know quite a bit on tap for the month of september different events going on but um and you know during a chautauqua weekend another weekend that we do want people to be safe at as well we do have a something else going on that weekend that i know you wanted to talk about yeah you know there's a chautauqua weekend it's a it's a huge weekend and um, you know we have a lot of a lot of citizens uh, inquiring and concerns about a uh, ku klux klan rally that has uh, been proposed for uh, for madison for jefferson county um, that is that is indeed the case they have uh, notified uh, uh, county officials notified myself uh, of their intent to uh, hold a rally here in in madison and jefferson county on that weekend um, there was concern about it being around the courthouse because obviously that's where old court days is set up and right. a big part of the Chautauqua program is um, we have moved that that will, will not be taking place at the courthouse it will be taking place uh, south of there at Fireman's Park so um, uh, if you had any concerns or if you were a vendor uh, about the courthouse being uh, compromised by this uh, by this proposed rally uh, you know I just want to ease some folks minds that it has been moved from from the courthouse steps and, and down to uh, a alternative uh, location which is Fireman's Park uh, um, like I said, we are working hand in hand with uh, the Madison Police and Indiana State Police, and and preparing for the event. Uh, you know, I just want to assure the citizens that uh, you know safety is going to be our number one priority, and uh, and we are planning accordingly. Right, and you know, it's a um, the First Amendment does protect the right to free speech and does protect the right to um, you know assemble, but that's whether or not you agree with the message that's being presented. But the most important case, you know, I know in your regard is making sure that any event that does happen is done safely. And Absolutely, yeah, you, I, you, you hit it right on the head. You know, the First Amendment does uh, does protect our our right and, and freedom of speech and, and to uh, to assemble in a peaceful manner. Uh, however, you know, in law enforcement, you know, our job is to make sure that uh, that that's done in a safe manner, and uh, you know. And we will do that. We will be enforcing all local, state, and uh, laws. So uh, you know, we'll uh, we'll be out, uh, be prepared, and uh, you know, uh, our hopes is that uh, you know it's uh, done in a peaceful manner, and, and no other issues occur. Yeah, that's definitely what we're hoping for out of that. That's Jefferson County Sheriff John Wallace joining us once again for Cop Talk. You can catch us online anytime at WORXradio.com or on your smartphone or tablet. Go to the TuneIn Radio app in the App Store. Once you download the TuneIn Radio app, type in WORX in the search engine. It'll bring us up and you can listen all the time, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Again, online, it's WORXradio.com. I am very proud of the efforts that the local law enforcement uh, 
has been put been putting forth to uh, eliminate uh, or alleviate a lot of the drug activities uh, here in Jefferson County. If uh, if we don't stay on top of that and and we don't continue to battle it, then it can quickly uh, take over a community and, and destroy it. So we're not about to let that happen here in Jefferson County. And, uh, and again, we're working hard, and uh, we appreciate the input from the uh, public as well. They're very instrumental in in assisting us with these uh, narcotic related uh, cases that uh, that uh, we work. Any little tip tidbit of information they can give us uh, may be key in solving it. So, again, it uh, seems like we, we talk about drugs every month, but, uh, right. you know, unfortunately it uh, keeps rearing its ugly head, uh, but we're uh, we're continuing to fight against it. Right, and, you know, and we, we just had last week, you know, the stories coming out of Jennings County. Um, I know Clark County recently declared a, a needle exchange program down there, so it's, it really is, it's, it's just, it's all around us, so you got to stay on top of it here, like you yeah, said. Yeah, it, it truly is. Uh, you know, heroin uh, and methamphetamine are really, unfortunately, running neck and neck as far as the uh, drug of choice here in our community. Um, the heroin overdoses here recently, as you just mentioned, in, in uh, Jennings County is, is very frightening. Um, some of this heroin is being laced uh, with uh, tranquilizers, with, uh, you know, elephant and, uh, and horse tranquilizers. So uh, it can be obviously very deadly uh, with just one dose. Uh, I know last night in Louisville, Kentucky, <clears throat> Excuse me. I think they had uh, about 24 heroin overdoses uh, within just a few hours. So, yeah, it's uh, fortunately uh, it hasn't hit here, but uh, but it's all around us, and it could very easily hit our community. So, uh, we got to stay on top of it. You know, our deputies are trained and do carry a Narcan which is the anti-drug to uh, heroin. Um, usually one uh, dose of that will uh, will bring them back out of the uh, uh, stupor they're in. But uh, it's uh, it's the times in which we live. Uh, you know, we got to be prepared. But uh, it's uh, it's very frightening. And uh, if you're listening and you are a heroin user, you know, you have no idea what you're getting ready to put in your body. Um, like I said, they're lacing it with uh, with these uh, serious uh, tranquilizers. And, uh, and one dose could be your last. And there are a lot of resources available. You know, I know that there's testing going on. But today there's testing going on at the um, health department from 1 to 3 p.m. And so, you know, it's I know it's for a lot of people it is hard to get themselves over this problem. But there are a lot of resources, resources yeah. out there to help people. Yes, and we have a lot of those in the in the jail as well. Uh, <clears throat> instead of just sitting there spending your time serving your serving your sentence, we do provide uh, AA and NA programs and, uh, and Life Springs is in there as well to uh, to help treat, uh, you know, drug and, and and mental issues as well so um, you know we're reaching out uh, our GD program is, uh, has been very successful we just had a uh, young lady graduate or obtain her GD while she was in in jail so we're very uh, very proud of that uh, you know we are trying to reach out and, and help as well but uh, you know I've never been addicted to it so I can't say how, how tough it is I can only imagine and uh, you know from seeing the effects that it does have on them it you know I'm sure it is very difficult but uh, but you know we got to keep moving forward we got to keep trying and uh, and be innovative and, and uh, techniques and methods on way to resolve this right and I think that you know the you talk about the alternative programming you know having those programs available and you've said before on the program it's a problem you can't arrest your way out of so that is huge for it's, it's a big step forward yeah there's several different fronts we have to hit it on you're right uh, you know we can make all the arrests in the world but uh, you know we're not going to arrest our way out of this issue so we got to we got to tack it on several fronts and, and and that's what we're trying to do you know the community is you know we have pulled together uh, we do have several uh, uh, groups that, that, that meet on a monthly basis to uh, to uh, come up with ways to uh, reach out and, and, and try to help folks. So, uh, you know, there, like you said, there is help out there. Uh, you know, reach out to it. Um, you know, if you failed once or you failed twice or five times, you know, you, you know, keep trying because uh, there is help out there. And there are people out there who want to see you, uh, you know, get better, get healthier, and become productive. And uh, so definitely um, a lot going on to help combat that problem in the community. Uh, kind of segueing away from that into, um, I know it was a, we've gotten a couple calls. You know, people have been asking me about this. And I know um, incident happened downtown Madison last night. I know obviously not a whole lot we can talk about, but you are familiar with the uh, the standoff on 2nd Street. Yeah, we did have a, uh, a standoff, uh, so to speak, in the 800 block of West 2nd last night. Uh, came in a little after 4 p.m. Uh, yeah concerned person called with regards to the well-being of an individual in a residence uh, down in Nader and Block West 2nd. Uh, we recognized the name of that individual and, and knew that uh, that he had outstanding uh, felony warrants. Um, there were some you know, threats that led us to believe that the uh, internet home wouldn't be safe for him or for the uh, for the officers. So uh, we wait on the side of caution and uh, utilize the emergency response team. And, uh, and after about three plus hours, uh, the standoff ended and, and no one was hurt. And that's the certainly the outcome we want. Uh, uh, George Reese, 48, of, uh, of Madison was arrested on uh, three felony charges on outstanding warrants of uh, escape, 
and uh, receiving stolen property. Um, I'm assuming there's going to be other multiple charges filed against him as a result of the standoff. Uh, I obviously don't know them at this time, but it's a city case. But uh, we work with them. Um, you know, we work well hand in hand. Anytime we need each other, we're there. Um, KDH, kudos to them for, for being down there to, to assist us. It was very hot. Uh, that threat of uh, dehydration was uh, was very prevalent, so they were there to assist, along with the Salvation Army and bringing us drinks, and uh, and also the number three fire company. We we appreciate those folks uh, for coming down and helping us out, uh, because we certainly couldn't do it without that team effort. Well, like you said, it is technically it's a, a city case, since it was the city police that initially responded, but it is a team effort. A lot goes into handling that, which you like to see. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, like I said, we work uh, work well with each other. Uh, you know, whatever it takes to get the job done. Sometimes uh, uh, people may wonder why it, you know, why it does take so long. Um, there is a methodical method of uh, of uh, how the ERT works and how we handle these situations. Uh, last thing you want to do is rush it and uh, you know force somebody's hand. So uh, there are numerous steps in which we take or which they take to uh, to work through these. And uh, and obviously it worked last night for the best because we were able to bring him out without uh, without anybody getting hurt. That's Jefferson County Sheriff John Walsh joining us once again for Cop Talk, brought to you by Anderson Sales and Services, a special Wednesday edition of Cop Talk. We typically do it the last Tuesday of each month. We'll be back here in a bit with Sheriff Wallace on Works 96.7 WORX. Works 96.7 WORX. Good morning, and thank you for tuning back into Cop Talk, brought to you by Anderson Sales and Services. A.J. Bramer here in studio at Telegraph Hill, joined by Jefferson County Sheriff John Wallace. And so, uh, Sheriff, we definitely appreciate you uh, coming on the show. Always a good opportunity to uh, chat with you once a month. It absolutely is, yeah. It's, uh, we appreciate the opportunity to, to kind of get our message out, uh, you know, via WORX. So we appreciate your uh, your support that you uh, give to us. And also, I'd like to uh, thank our citizens uh, and our community for the support that they, the overwhelming support uh, that they have shown law enforcement here in the last uh, month or several months, uh, you know, in light of the uh, of the issues that's going on nationwide, uh, you know, we're very fortunate to live in a community that uh, that uh, are not experiencing those uh, issues and uh, and are and are very supported by the uh, by the local community. So, from a perspective of a law enforcement officer, and I think I speak on behalf of all of them, uh, thank you very much for all the uh, all the support that uh, that you give us here locally. It's uh, it uh, means a tremendous deal to us when somebody does come up and, and pat you on the back or thank you for this you know the job that you do and it uh, it is a daunting task at, at times it uh, becomes more difficult each day um, so but uh, we're going to continue the good fight and, uh, and continue to serve our citizens the best we can but uh, but we do appreciate all the support that we get uh, we definitely appreciate what you guys do for the community um, is there anything else you uh, anything else we need to talk about this month well just uh, like I said just uh, just be safe uh, over this holiday weekend and uh, enjoy the uh, the last of the warm weather right uh, I know for one I'm ready for some cool weather this <laughs> <laughs> this heat and humidity, I'm over it. So, uh, yeah, we're going into the fall season. Uh, football season started, and yeah. uh, and uh, you know, just everybody be safe and uh, and enjoy your weekend. I know. I'm sure that you know. As the weather cool down, cools down, that means uh, you're one step closer to Packer season. Packer season's almost here. I, yeah. I was going to bring that up. Uh, we're a little little fired up about this season, so it's uh, it's looking good. I want to make a trek up north here in a, in a few months and uh, watch my beloved Packers. So everybody has their favorite NFL team or college team, and uh, and it's a uh, it's a fun time of the year. So uh, get out and enjoy it. Yeah, for sure. All right, Sheriff. Uh, once again, thank you so much for coming on the show. Absolutely, my pleasure, AJ. Thank you. That is Jefferson County Sheriff John Wallace joining us once again for Cop Talk, brought to you by Anderson Sales and Services. Big thanks to the sheriff for coming on the program today. Big thanks to Anderson's for sponsoring it and big thanks to you, the listener, for tuning into it. Um, we do cop talk once again the last Tuesday of each month, so that means we'll be seeing you again on September 27th. Until then, be sure to keep it tuned in here to Works 96.7 WORX. That's going to do it for this month's edition of Cop Talk. I'm AJ Brammer. Thanks for tuning in.